Okay, what I'm gonna show you now is this simple style. It's very different than what Vanya created in the book, but I thought it would be fun to use the same characters in the book. And I am going to use this razor pen. Uh, it's a razor, what's it called? A razor, let me see if I can get that there away. Razor point, a pilot razor point and a brush. And I've got a water brush also somewhere um, right here. And if you want, and you actually don't even need a pencil, but what I'm gonna do is show you how to draw these on where you start with simple shapes. And this is, this is available, this download is available at my website. So kids, if you would like to learn how to draw these um, animals and this technique, you can go to my website, DorotheaRoner.com, and then there's a download page that you can download those. So the reason I like to draw this way is that it allows you to um, draw a lot of different things. Once you learn how to sketch in this way, that you can basically draw anything. So I'm gonna put this here, put up here, put that there. Those were my notes. <laughs> you weren't supposed to see those. Okay. All right, so here we go. Let me see if that's close enough. All right, so I'm gonna start with, okay, here was a little squirrel I started. And this is, you can see, this is really hard, but it was easier when it was vertical. Okay. All right, so here's a little squirrel that I drew. And you can see the, uh, right here is where I get the shapes and then I put them together. So I'm gonna start with a little rabbit, okay? And what I like to do, and the nice thing about this is you can put their, their legs on in any position and make them look like they're walking or just standing there or turning their head. So let's start with rabbit, okay? And what I do, that's just got that, I don't even know, that's like a little modified squished oval with his little her little bottom here. And this pen is water soluble. Um, and see, so I'm gonna take the little tail Add the little tail there. And once you start, once we add this, we'll add the water. So wherever you add the ink, it's gonna get really dark, okay? And she's got a little, she's got a little fur there too. All right, so then I'm gonna, I like to make their heads kind of big because it makes them look cuter. And this, this technique works really nicely for nature drawing also if you want to draw more realistically but for now we're just having fun we're just drawing a few little um okay so now here's the little ear and then remember wherever wherever you're really putting that ink down and then in other ear it's just kind of a little shape there and you can look at any animal and figure out what their shapes are. I like to put their little eyes like that. Okay, so let's make this one, let's make this one walking. So we're gonna put his little foot back here. And it's just really simple little shapes. Maybe he's, maybe she's skipping. We'll put her other little foot up here like that. So if this back leg is this way, this leg will be, or this arm will be back. And then this one will be forward. And do you see how loose I'm going? It really, you really don't have to, and then we'll, you really don't have to be very detailed. That's the really fun thing about this method. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my, and this is just regular paper, uh, printing paper. So it doesn't blend. I'm gonna show you some other watercolor papers and how different they are. Um, but this one's really nice because it doesn't go really crazy, but you get some really nice shading techniques. So sometimes you can get, I really like subtleties in drawings. Um, and so I can just start laying that water on there. And then it, and then it starts, um, kind of dissolving and softening that water. 
and you can see how it, it dissolves it. And then where I usually try to put more water or darkness on the bottom of things because that's usually on the bottom of things, that's where there's shadows. And on the top, there's light. So that allows you to um, get that three dimensionality, even though this is a very sketchy looking thing. It just gives it a, a nice quality that you just don't get with just the line work. So, and I wanna show you this other, um, this is a really nice uh, brush. It's got, you can get these at Hobby Lobby or at Michael's, but they've got little, like for grass, and these are fun for making, actually we can make little lines like they're, I wonder if I can get closer there. I'm not sure I can lift that up but this allows you to make grass real thin lines so and like I said this this you can see closer here um, this is regular paper so it doesn't really flow like the watercolor paper so this is what you can do if you do not have if you have a water soluble pen and a piece of paper and a brush at home this is what you can draw Okay, so I'm going to show you now with a piece of watercolor paper, the difference, okay? So let's draw, which one should we draw? Okay, so let's see. Let's do the turtle. Does anyone want to do the turtle? I'm going to do the turtle. Okay, let's see here. So for the turtle, I've broken the shapes down. Um, let's see right here. I, I'm having a hard time seeing whether you can see my uh, whether you can see my uh, everything I'm trying to show you. So bear with me, people. All right. So the turtle is broken down. I've I've got it all into these little shapes. So we're gonna start with the belly of the little turtle. And this is a nice, um, oh, it's a soft watercolor, which is kind of between a, a hot press and a cold press. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make that outside oval there. And then I don't, I'm just really guessing, I'm just kind of imagining what these this turtle looks like. If you really wanted to get more detailed, you could really go look up um, pictures of turtles and really try to copy more exactly what they actually look like but this is just for fun so that's what we're doing here so that's the bottom side of the belly of the turtle I'm gonna make this a little bit squigglier and darker put a little more ink down here all right I can't tell if this is if I'm still going here so Hold on, people. I'm going to make sure I'm still going here. All right. Let's see here. All right. All right. I'm just going to keep going. I was trying to see if I was... I'll look up there and make sure you can see. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, okay. So I'm going a little bit darker on the bottom. Okay. And now I'm going to... Because their legs... Here's all their little legs... And let's make this little turtle dancing because who doesn't like a dancing turtle? Um, okay. And he's gonna have his little leg up here. And I'm kind of making a variation. These don't have to be perfect. This is just a variation of all these um, shapes, okay? And I think the idea is that it doesn't have to be perfect, which makes it really fun and then we're, the neck is here, so I'm going to make the neck here. And it has a big oval kind of a, oops, kind of an oval and a smile. I'm going to give him a big old eye here. Okay. Now, here's his shell. The back side of his shell is this squiggly, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and you can see this really doesn't look that great. It's just kind of a bunch of, thin little lines that don't look like they're doing very much, 
But once you put the water on, you can really get a nice um, three-dimensional uh, look to it, which is what I love about this. And then we'll put his little tail coming up here. Okay, so I'm going to decide, I'm going to put a little bit more dark here because I want that to flow. Okay, so now at this point, at this point, okay, I'm going to start with the water. All right. And sometimes it's really nice to lay the brush on its side and just let it flow and see what happens. Do you see that? And then you can make little squigglies all over. And it makes these patterns that if you tried to make them by doing them yourself, you never could. So this maybe has a real pattern, a pretty pattern on its belly. And do you see how dark and flowy the um, ink is when you're using a, a nice watercolor paper. So that's the difference that papers can make. So if you're home and you're wanting to try different things and you get tired of working on one, go grab a different type of paper. Um, you know, brown paper would be really pretty too. And then I'm just going to go over the outside here. So there's the shell. Um, I'm going to show you something really quick. If you want things to stay white, you can cover, like maybe we want that shell to stay white. So I'm gonna go on the outside of this and, and it's gonna make that turtle pop out. See that? And then here's his shadow here. And that's called negative space. All right, now that's, that's really wet right there. So this is my grass brush. I'm gonna pull this up like this. There's more ink there. All right, let's keep going here. Now, I'm gonna keep it white on that side. I'm gonna keep it dark on this side. But th when you're drawing like this, you wanna look at the darks and the lights and the middle tones. And I'm, they kind of are scaly, so I'm gonna go ahead and just brush that in, brush that in. And as you can see, I'm not taking, I'm not being very tedious at this. It's just, it's just a really fun approach and especially for children because sometimes kids get really frustrated and I don't want anybody to be frustrated with their drawings. And I'm gonna go here. The other thing is when you, when you do this approach, sometimes maybe it gets too washy and you decide you don't want it so washy, you can let it dry and then you can go back and bring out more of the lines. So this is a fun way to get value in your drawing. All right, so there's a turtle. Okay, that's another way. Um, and now I'm gonna show you, what time is it? 2.32. Um, let's see. Here's another, here's another type of uh, watercolor paper, and I'm not sure what it is. I think this is a Strathmore paper. But let's draw a goose here. We're just gonna keep, and if you kids are drawing along, if you guys have questions, oh yeah, I didn't do chicken. I guess I could do chicken. Um, I didn't do chicken on the worksheet, so I'm not gonna do chicken, Lisa. Okay, so let's do goose. Goose is the big one. So let's make goose, um, okay, so this is a funny story because we used to have geese when we were growing up. And when you break down the animals, in this way you can draw them in any position that you want so we used to have geese when we were little so I'm gonna start out with the hillside maybe maybe there's a few eggs that the gooses have laid okay and I had a friend who was from town all right I'm gonna draw the goose first and then I'll tell you the story so this is Goose. I'm gonna draw the tail here and his body. Now instead of upright, whenever geese are mad, they put their heads down like this. And 
they are really scary. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that before, but I'm using the same shapes that I have here. I'm just putting it in a different position. And instead of having his mouth closed, I, he's mad, so I am gonna make him have his mouth open. Anyway, I had a friend who was from town. I'm gonna put his wings up here like this. And she saw the geese and she thought they looked really nice and they were nesting. And I told her to go ahead and go pet it. And she did. And I warned her right before it got her, but um, they're really mean. And uh, I don't know if she ever forgave me for that, but don't worry, she was fine. So now I've got the foot here. And you know, when I'm drawing, actually this is what I do. I try to, um, I make up stories as I draw, which is really fun. All right, so now I'm gonna add some more feathery light. I want there to be dark under here. And I want there to be dark here. So kids, I hope that you realize that you can draw just about anything using simple shapes. Okay, now the fun part. I'm gonna actually put a little bit more. Maybe she's got a couple of eggs that she's hiding. Okay. Okay, so there's, put a little bit more grass here. Okay, so that's a very simple, not too, not too complicated. This wing is kind of backwards, but you know what? It doesn't matter because this is a, this is a sketch for fun. And I think sometimes when we draw and we're too judgmental of our work, we don't have fun. So this is a time to just have fun. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead with, I'm gonna start with the underside because I know that I want this to be darker. Ooh, I forgot to show you something. I'll show you something really fun in a second. So I'm just gonna lay this water in it. You can see I'm not scrubbing it. I'm, let, I'm letting the water um, kind of loosen up that ink. And you really can use any water-soluble pen that you want. So we'll just bring this here. All right. And like I said, this isn't perfect, but it shows you how you can really try to keep what's on top light and what's on the bottom. That gives it a nice quality that you can't get um, when you just use line work, which I like using both. All right, there we go. I'm gonna pop that in there. Okay. So it kind of looks like a Canada goose a little bit and his wings are backwards, but we don't care, right? Okay, I'm gonna show you something else really fun. See how, just if you have the lines in there, you don't even have to do anything else. Just run the water through it and it makes it look cool. All right, so, where's my water? Okay, here's another fun thing. I've got this little water um, spray bottle, water bottle, spray bottle. If you just spritz your, um, in certain places, you can get a really beautiful effect with the, you don't want to do everywhere because you'll lose the, the, um, the focus, but if you put that certain spots, you can really get a nice effect. So I think what I want to do now is make those eggs stand out a little bit more show her that she's protecting those eggs. All right. Okay, so, um, do you want me to show you more? I could show you more or we could, um, or we could answer questions. I do have one more color color things that I could show you with a different pen. Um, 
I think I'll show you that. Actually, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you some different drawings that I've done with this technique that don't look anything like this. Uh, right here, let's go on up here. Okay, uh, this, this I did ages ago, and this is just done uh, with walnut. I like to do a lot of nature drawing. So this I do, I put walnut ink or coffee stain, I can't remember, and I was out drawing, and this pen, it just worked perfect for drawing, um, I think those were May apples, and then of course some little fairies showed up, and some little bugs. This is, this is the same technique using, um, gosh, this was in 08. This was, I've been using this technique for a long time. It's one of my favorite drawing techniques. I'm not gonna show you that one. Um, this is just a little bird, bird drawing with that technique. Uh, let's see. Here's another one. This, these are just more flowers and you can go back in and you can add watercolor to them. This paper you can see really blurs it out. So if you want to keep uh, more detail, you have to either be very, um, go back in with pen line or else just not use a lot of ink because it blends really quite a bit. Oh, that was a lady slipper that I did in, up in Canada. Um, let's see. I think that's about all on that one. Okay, so the next one I want to show is, um, this is the last, this is the last, another notebook. And this is a notebook that I like to draw with um, similar uh, technique, but I'm using a different tools. These are called um, ink tense pencils. And I thought maybe we could draw Okay, and these are acrylic pencils. What, they're like watercolor pencils, but they're incredibly vibrant, and they are, once they're down, you can just keep layering them like acrylic, and they won't come up with water. So I'm gonna show you how I do a drawing. We'll, we'll actually draw, okay, this one, all of these are water sol soluble except the outliner. So I'm gonna start with the outliner and we're gonna, and I'm gonna draw it like a pencil drawing. And let's draw, I've got fox, I've got a uh, squirrel, I've got dodo. How about rabbit? Or we already draw, drew rabbit. How about um, dodo? I did draw dodo fox. Which one haven't we drawn? Oh, and I didn't practice chicken. Okay, let's just put rabbit on here because we should have rabbit on here. All right, so this one is, like I said, it's like a pencil, but it's, it'll, it will not uh, wash away. And I'm gonna draw rabbit, but I'm gonna draw her looking the opposite way. And I'm just gonna, and each of them have a sign, so you're gonna, gonna have to help me figure out words that go in each of the signs. So I'm gonna start with her. Um, and I just put the little squares in the background just for fun. Oops, it's hard to go backwards. I'm having to interpret this. She's got a big belly going this way. All right, I think I'm gonna have them each carrying a sign saying something. Um, and of course, I'm gonna give her a big head because we like big heads on little animals because it makes them look cute. And she's gonna be I'm just gonna have her stand in here. Okay. But again, this very simple technique, I love these water-soluble pens and brushes because they, um, they just work up so quickly. And let's see her. And you don't have to get all fussy about the details. And then she's gonna have a sign too. I think I'll give her a sign. Saying something. All right, so here we go. Now, I'm gonna show you a different trick of what I like to do. These are, you can either, oops, I'm falling over here. You can either, what color should we make her? 
let's start with a sienna gold okay you can either start with these and just start uh, coloring and whatever color was showing through on the bottom it'll kind of there'll be a kind of a fun transparency so we're going to start with kind of a light color first and then for this one I'm going to use my um, now I don't see my water brush okay so now we'll go ahead and just start blending her like this But you see how vibrant those colors are? Sometimes watercolor um, brushes, or it's hard to talk and draw at the same time. Watercolor pencils aren't as vibrant as these. These are just intense colors, okay? So now when I have that wet, if I don't, if I wanna add more color, I think I'm gonna make her a green. She's gonna be a green rabbit. So what I do is I, if I want to go back over that, I'll um, put a little bit of the pigment on some sandpaper, and then I can get the drop the color in like this. And that way it keeps that softness, because if I went back in with the pencil, it would show those pencil marks. So... I don't know if this was such a good idea to make a green rabbit. She looks kind of weird, but I suppose there's green rabbits. All right, I need a little bit of, there's a nice dark blue. Uh, let's see if I can find a... Hmm. Okay, here's a deep indigo. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of deep indigo because I want a little bit darker color down there. Maybe she's got some and I wanted her nose to be a little bit brighter. So you see, this is a, just a really loose um, way of drawing. And that's about all I got for today. Um, I would very much like to fill in these words, like fox, what's fox saying and squirrel saying and Dodo saying, we gotta have him say something. Um, any ideas? I don't know if this is still working, I can't see. Well, we'll figure that out later. Um, yes, watercolor pencils work, Lisa. Um, the Inktense pencils are really nice. Sometimes watercolor pencils, you have to have a really good watercolor paper or they don't blend unless you have a really high grade. Um, watercolor pencil. I'm going to try to see these. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see these here. I'm not seeing any posts come in or any, the comments aren't coming in. So um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and finish by saying, um, I wish I could see comments here. Next time I'll have this worked out a little bit better, guys. <laughs> so Let's see there. Let me try one more time to see what's coming in. All right. Okay, so um, I think that's, I think that was it. Did I show you how to draw all the animals? I think I did. I didn't show you how to draw squirrel. Should we draw squirrel? I'll show you how to draw one more squirrel since we still do have a little more time. And I'm gonna do it on good paper because I like working on I like working on the nice paper. I'm gonna go back to this. And I'll show you how to draw the little branch too. So, okay, Allison, I'm gonna keep drawing. Um, but you said, okay, so we still have a few more minutes. Um, all right, so squirrel, I'm gonna start out with, um, I would always like to start out with the body. And the fun thing about these is if you use the actual shapes but you elongate them or squish them you can make the little animals have their own 
different characters. Like you could make a really skinny little squirrel and a really fat little squirrel. So I'm gonna go like that. See, I think his body has to be bigger. I made his, yeah, let's see. I'll make him a little bit bigger here. Give him a little belly here. They always like to eat. I'm just gonna put his little feet there. And his tail, I've got big old tails coming back here. And I have the main uh, shape, but you can always draw the feather, you know, the fur the way you want. I've got his, got his little eye coming in here. Super cute. I don't know, he should be, maybe he's holding an acorn or something, or maybe he's going after an acorn. I'm gonna make a little branch here. See, I'm still using the same shapes that I showed you. I'm just adding on to them. And that's why this is a really fun way to draw because you can draw things in a lot of different ways. Okay. I'm gonna put the And there's trees back here. So you can make like he's way up in the treetops. And that's where I'll put my, that's where I'll spray a little bit of the watercolor because we want that to be soft, okay? And this thing gets a little bit further in the foreground. They get a little bit bigger. All right. Let's go with that. All right, that's all I need right now. Unless we want him. Oh wait, I made it in the wrong kind of tree. That's really not an oak tree, so I'm not gonna put an acorn on that. Okay, now we're gonna go with the water. Actually, first I'm gonna grab my water, my spray bottle. Those are the trees back there. These are such simple techniques that are so fun to do and make drawing so kind of effortless. And sometimes I was trained to make put every detail on um, as a scientific illustrator. So I'm finding that I really enjoy um, painting. Oh, that's my brush. Painting really loosely like this. And I'm just gonna keep going. On this one, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this one kind of tight. This this paper is really nice. It's got a real nice. It doesn't. It doesn't flow too much. It just flows just right. So you can just rub rub the watercolor across there or the water. I'm gonna let that flow there. And usually on leaves, it's it's a good idea to like have one side be really dark and then the other. And then a lot of times you can, when you have ink on it, you can just keep drawing lighter things with it. I'm just gonna make his back. There we go. And it's fun to leave little um, white spots and not make things perfect. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just let that flow down there. See how that, see how that, if you just lay a bead of water along the line, it just flows. It just gives a beautiful pro property that you can't get if you tried. So I'm gonna, they have like a little white face and a little white around their eyes, so. I hope you can still hear me because I start to just kind of get into my own thing and I for, kind of forgot you were there. <laughs> okay. The other thing is if you don't like something, you can always, just like watercolor, you can go back in and dab out. Um, and you can put watercolor over this too. So I'm gonna finish his belly here. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Keep his belly white. I'm gonna go on the outside of here. 
and pretend these are trees back here. So he's really going to stick in here. But I just love all the little shapes that, um, that happen. Oh, 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 this is a perfect time to use this brush. Let's go ahead with this. Make him have a little feathery belly. And this, he's got his fur coming out here. There you go. So this still needs to soften just a tad. I'm gonna just soften this a little bit. Anyway, this is basically a really fun way to sketch, so I hope you'll try it. Um, and where's my little notebook? I think I'm about done right now, so if you have any questions, please feel free to post them here and I'll get back and answer them. And if you do any sketches, I'd absolutely love to see them. Um, and oh, I forgot to thank Stimola Live. I want to thank Erica and Allison for putting this on. Um, they, they have this going to, I think, April 3rd, where there are all kinds of other authors and illustrators that are presenting their craft and how to draw. How, I think I saw one on writing novels and crafting stories and all kinds of art techniques. So if you are interested in that, um, head on over to Stimola Live and you can check out their, or you can sign up for their newsletter. And you can download the worksheet that I have here. And I think I've got a coloring page also for kids. Um, and you can share anything that you did. I'd love to see it. You can t uh, hashtag moments to Marvel um, at Dorothea R. And also I do have a newsletter that you can sign up for and I've got some online uh, classes that I'm gonna be starting very similar to this because I really think it's, I think every person can learn how to draw and I think just learning techniques is a really um, great way to do it. So anyway, thank you for showing up here today. <laughs> sorry for all the, sorry for all the uh, technical things, but that happens, we're all learning. So thanks a lot guys, bye.